Hey friends, welcome back to Dig It With Raven. We've made it to the end. This is the final agent of deterioration. Thanks for coming along on this journey with me, you guys. I know 10 videos in a row with this trench coat rain hat combo is a lot, but we got through it. And I really hope that these videos have added some insight into your collections and collections management practices, or maybe they even helped you out with your schoolwork. If you've missed any of the other nine videos on the agents of deterioration, or if you just wanna watch them again to keep you know, the trench coat vibe going. I've made a playlist for you guys. It's linked here, it's in the pinned comment in this video, and I've also added it in my description down below. Today, for our final episode, we're talking about dissociation. I know that's a crazy big weird word, and when I first heard it, I was super confused because I couldn't quite figure out how an object could, quote, detach from its state of being. Because when you hear dissociation, you kind of think about James McAvoy and Split, and I was not ready for museum collection to do that to me. My name's Hedwig. I have red socks. When we're talking about dissociation in a museum's and collections context, we're talking about the loss of data that's associated with an artifact or just losing the artifact altogether from poor collections management. Separating data from an object can be quite detrimental because then the object loses its value. And not just the monetary value, but the educational and informational value. You guys know that when I make my archeology span videos, I talk a lot about the importance of context. Having an artifact is one thing, but without its context, all of that information of its surrounding, its burial environment, what was found next to it, above it, below it, the artifact is essentially worthless because we can't get any proper information out of it that will actually contribute to the archeological record. So yeah. It's just useless. Context is key, not just for archeological artifacts, but for all cultural heritage objects. This agent of deterioration is different from the other nine that we talked about because it has nothing to do with the physical integrity of the object. But instead, dissociation affects the legal, intellectual, and cultural aspects associated with an object. Dissociation occurs when we lose the information associated with an object. So this could be a missing label, it could be an accidentally deleted entry on a collections database, it could be mixing up two objects or misplacing an object. It could even just be writing information down in a way that no one else can understand it. All of the other nine agents of deterioration can contribute to dissociation. For example, incorrect or high relative humidity or just water damage can loosen adhesives that are keeping labels on. Light can fade the ink that was used to create the label. If the label is put directly onto the object, like with a lot of ceramics, abrasion from physical forces can rub part of it or all of it off. A fire could burn up archives or records rooms, you see how they can all play their part in dissociation. Another thing we need to be aware of with dissociation is the cultural implications that it can have. A lot of museum objects that are from native cultures hold a continuous value and meaning to that culture. This means that they need to be taken care of with respect and in a very special way. If an object is handled in a manner that is disrespectful or not proper to the object, the value of the object to the people that held it in such esteem could just be lost and completely destroyed. Combating dissociation is essentially the organization Olympics. Because without any labels or information attached to your objects, your collection just becomes someone's cluttered basement. A lot of preventive dissociation measures boil down to just good collections management protocols. And what I'm about to say is going to get really like convoluted and crazy, so just try and stay on the same page with me. So if objects are properly labeled, with labels either on them or attached to them, and then put in a box with the same label number on it, and then that box is put on the storage shelf with the space where it belongs also labeled, and then that space on the shelf is put into a collections database with all of the other information that pertains to the object, it's a lot easier to keep track, to find, and to care for the object in comparison to if objects are maybe just labeled and then placed willy-nilly around a room or then just moved around or never put back in the same place twice. You can see how this organization can really help in keeping track of your objects as well as just making sure that all of the information stays where it's supposed to. Oh, okay, that was, that was really complicated to explain. I hope you understood that. If you didn't, I'm sorry. I'll try again uh, in the comments, just let me know because I have a headache just trying to intertwine that entire sentence together. It's also very important to have a standard for labeling, documentation, and recording. Keeping hard copies on paper are really great, but they should always be backed up on a collections management system on a computer. Just another little level of security there. You always want to back up your information. It's also a good idea to do regular inventories of your collection to make sure that everything is where it should be and that all labels are in good condition. This is also 
also super helpful for monitoring the overall condition of your collection, and it may also help in refamiliarizing you with things that maybe you forgot you had. Think of it like a fun little treasure hunt. If you find any objects that are dissociated from their data or vice versa, then you should create a list of that lost information. With any luck, you might be able to find a few matches here and there from that list. It's like when you're sorting out all those lost socks from the laundry and you end up finding a few pairs that kind of got lost along the way. So it's really helpful to just put those puzzle pieces back together. Dissociation is a short and sweet agent of deterioration to discuss because essentially it's all about good housekeeping. Collections managers, conservators, registrars, curators, all these people are key players when it comes to maintaining the integrity of a cultural heritage collection. So we all have to give them a huge high five for the organized chaos that they deal with on a daily basis. So just good for you guys. Much love. Actually, let's give them all a round of applause for having to think of and deal with all 10 of these agents of deterioration. I hope you guys liked this series, and if you have any other ideas on video series that you'd be interested in seeing from me, make sure you leave a comment on this video because I've got so much stuff in the work for you guys already, but I am always happy to hear from you guys and learn what you're most excited to see out of this channel. Also, make sure that you're following me on Instagram because I provide a lot more information on video development on there, and I also post a lot more on there, so you'll get a lot more content from me that way. Big thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon for supporting the channel, and for the last time in this outfit, stay dirty my friends.